Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the continuing saga, so to say, of how to find a short or a parasitic draw that we discussed about. As you can see previously, I noted about using a block diagram first if you have a short or you have a parasitic draw that I spoke about before. This will get you down to the possible system where the short is by pulling out fuses. Now, once you have you reach the conclusion, let's say, that let's say, for example, I pulled out this fuse and the current decreased. A parasitic draw again is different from a dead short. A dead short will blow the fuse. This will be blown instantly, right away. A parasitic draw that we spoke about is over time. Again, for example, at night you leave your car, you come in the morning, and obviously you can't crank, and that's because you were pulling current overnight, over time it happened. So once you did that, you'll say, well, okay, the battery or the, or the headlights or something like that, obviously all the, something bad in the radio, even theft system, over time, drained the battery. And the battery wasn't able to crank because maybe it was 10 volts or around there or something like that. So therefore, came to the conclusion it is a parasitic draw. Once we establish that and we know the system, then we could go to a component level, which brings us to this video to a, a difficult difficult subject how to find the short component wise how to find the parasitic load so we were on the right track when we said pull out the fuses and i want to stress one point where if you have a parasitic load like we just explained which means current is being drawn over time which obviously drains out the battery you're not looking for loose wires. If you have a loose wire, let's say a broken wire, for example, this wire over here, the green one, coming from the ABS, let's say we got it down to, we pulled out the the, the, the fuse, the block diagram, led us to this, anti-lock brake system. It could be the theft system, it could be the radio, anything is possible besides the headlights and all this uh, uh, um the obvious, the obvious. So therefore, let's say we come over here, fuse over here is rate of 50 amps. Let's say this wire, which is again, the green wire, this is the B plus we call it. B plus is the supply, the supply wire connection, we call that. As you can see, it's 12 volts. So therefore, let's say this, the, this is going to pin one. This is pin two, this is pin 3 has no connection, pin 4 is connected, 5, 6, 7 has no connection, 8, which is the white wire, 9, the red wire, has a connection, the other ones don't have, 10, 11, 12. Anyway, to reiterate the point, let's say this wire broke off, okay, it broke off. If it broke off, I would not be, I would not be drawing more current, Probably, I would be, be drawing less current. So therefore, let's say we have to draw less than 1 amp, which is 100 millivolts. Let's say 1 amp is, just, is the most or something. We're drawing 9 amps. We're drawing 9 amps. So we're drawing more current, obviously, 8 amps more than we should. So therefore, I'm pulling out the fuse. I'm not looking for a broken wire. Why? Because a broken wire will not make me to increase the current. It would decrease the current because there's less of a load on that circuit. Now, what's the exception? The exception is we have a dead short to ground. If I put in my ohm meter right over here at the fuse, positive over here, and I go to ground, and I went and I highlighted in yellow the, the grounds this yellow is a ground this yellow is a ground this is a ground this is a ground so let's say I go from ground and I go to the fuse to the fuse and I measure 
low ohms, one ohms, or oh, a very least amount of ohms, obviously. That that once I took out the fuse, before I decide to put another fuse and blow that fuse again, like I said, I take an ohmmeter, put the positive here without the fuse, and they go to ground, and I see if I still have a short to ground. Now, for argument's sake, let's say this, when it did break off, let's say the wire broke off. Well, when the wire broke off, you're going to say, well, you know what? That's an open, like we just mentioned. That's not going to draw more current. Well, where did the wire land? Maybe the wire is hitting the metal, the chassis, which is grounded. The engine block or somewhere like that, which is ground. The ground all over, remember. So therefore, if this did, wire broke off. The green wire broke off at pin one. It's broken. Hit hit chassis or on the metal frame or something that is grounded. It'll blow the fuse right away. That's a dead short. Not a parasitic draw. A parasitic draw means probably that the, the fuses are good. If not, I wouldn't be pulling current over time because it would be an open circuit so i hope that point i stressed and i hope you understand that again a dead short is something that we look for something that found a path to ground so any wire can be loose coming from this one the b plus can be loose or broken and hit chassis or something or ground or keep it connected to this ground when it fell off Anything is possible. Now, the point being made of looking for a drawer, let's say again, we had a common fuse, and we pulled out the common fuse that brought us to the system. Fine, now we're going component level. So we're drawing 9 amps instead of 1 amp. That's a problem, obviously. Which fuse do you, full, do you, do you take apart? And the other thing is to find out where can I find uh, a jumper that will help me to cut down the possible components. So therefore, again, if we look at this, and I highlighted them different colors, we have one fuse, two fuse, three fuse, four fuses in this circuit. We will led to this system. When we pull the fuse out, before, the current went from 9 amps, went back to 1 amp. So, we know somehow it is related to here the problem. But which one? Look how many components you have. Look how many components you have. Can I just go and replace? Can't tell, can't tell that to the customer. Right? So now is the fun beginning. So therefore... If I pull out this fuse, if you look at this fuse, and this is my point that I wanted to make, a, a common fuse. What do I mean by the common fuse? Well, it's called ECU, which is a computer. Instrument panel, the junction box. So anyway, if I'm going to pull out this fuse, let's say, now I want to see the current draw now. I'm going to pull out this fuse, and guess what? Now the current... Went from 9 amps back to 1 amp. I said, oh, good, okay, I'm getting somewhere. Now the problem lies in this area. Where is it connected to? Follow the green. Maybe this one. A sensor. Over time, right? And what about the other line? It has two lines. Or this one, which is 20 pin 28, the violet, 12 volts. Could be this one, could be this one. If I really, really want to get now to component level even more, I look at it, I follow the diagram, and I say, oh boy, so I, it's either this one or this one. They're both expensive. I want to be sure. What do I do? I come over here, and I say, wait a second, this goes through a jumper, black and black and 12 and 13. I can open up this jumper take this out what will that do for me well i know the current is at nine amps i have a draw i know this is going here i know this one is going here 
I want to isolate the problem, either this one or this one. How do I do that? By opening up the circuit somewhere, right? We said the fuse is common to both of these. So I don't know if it's this one. I don't know if it's this one. This will isolate my, my problem even more to this one. So you know what I do? I pull out this one. I look at the, I look at the, at the ammeter that we said how to connect it to the battery positive in series. The, the ammeter shows me it was 9 amps before I pulled it out. I pulled it out, still 9 amps. That tells me this is not the culprit. This is not the guilty culprit. He's innocent this time. What else is left? You guessed it, this one. This one, brake actuator. That's how you isolate it. What can go wrong? Let's look. Maybe the positive over here, pin 28. You have a ground over here. Could be, maybe, somehow, something is shorted or something. If this would be shorted to ground, again, if this would be shorted to ground, this would blow the fuse instantly right away we'll not be drawing it over time once there's a dead short forget it they blow the fuse it's not going to happen overnight so therefore we're looking for something that is is pulling more current but not enough to blow the fuse we took this out we took this one out didn't make a difference therefore we left with this one Now let's say, to forget about this, let's say a ground over here. Follow this one, follow this one, follow this one again. Now, you look over here again. This one, which is 5 amps, and you're going to say, well, now I could put the meter in place of the fuse, because it's only 5 amps, right? It's only 5 amps over here. And my meter is rated at 10 amps. More than that will blow the fuse on, on the meter. So I could take out this. This one, put the meter over here. And see how much I'm drawing. But we know how much we're drawing. We're drawing 9 amps. We have to make sure how much current we're pulling. Because remember, these are rated at 50 amps or more, which will blow the meter. That's why I said put it in series with the battery. Right? So therefore, if you're pulling 9 amps, then when I know, then I know it's safe to put this meter over here. Even though it's pulling more than the rated uh, fuse, but we're taking out the fuse. So therefore, we come to this and we say we pull this out the fuse. We isolated. This was not the problem, let's say. We come here to this and we say, okay, let's pull out this fuse. What happens to the current? Again, it went from 9 amps to 1 amps, 2 amps. Therefore, the culprit has to be over here. Can this, be, can this pin go to ground? If this pin would go to ground, we have an instant short to ground. It would blow the fuse. But somehow, we come to this component. At least with isolating it to a component. And so on, and so on, and so on. Again, with this case... We come over here again. This is the B plus. We come over here, the B plus. We'll we'll take out each fuse. And then we'll see. But remember, fuses can go out to, to PCMs, to other modules, to control other modules. And when you pull out one fuse, doesn't necessarily mean that's the area. So you have to be careful. And this is why I said go to the system first to the block diagram. See where the fuses connect to. One fuse can control many, many systems, which is called another fuse, which has another fuse. That's why I said first block diagram. How, how, and please, so please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. I would appreciate comments, likes, dislikes, um, any problems. And I would also like to um, invite you, I guess, to the other channel of Joe Electronic Schematics, which is actually for... Uh, Students learning electronics, uh, the basic transistors and resistors, which is another ch channel to teach students the basics of electronics. 
Other thing is, one more thing over here, when you look at these diagrams over here, sometimes you come across this. There are two pins over here. Which pin are we referring to? Let's say this one, 15, 18, 18, 17. Which one are we looking at when we look at this? If you notice over here, one is going to this one. It says without TFT display, which is a liquid dis liquid crystal display. This is the display in front of the car for these Toyotas, combination a meter assembly. This is without, and this is with. So if it's without, number one, you follow number one. But you follow these. This is number one. The vertical of this. So you will be following 15, 16, 7, 1, 13, 19. If you're following two with TFT display, you would be following number two. You would be following pin 9, pin 13, pin 1, pin 20, pin 17, pin 16. This row, number two. The other one, number pin 1, you'll be following this row of this one. little tricky, but this is the world of schematics. Anyway, like I said, so enjoy the videos, and I hope that in the, fu in the future... That uh, I invite you to other videos of diagnostics, and please, if you have friends that are interested, please subscribe and watch the channels. I would appreciate all comments, trying to improve the quality of this, and, it, and sometimes it gets very difficult, as you can see, to try to uh, color code and try to really, really analyze and diagnose uh, the, the systems. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.